Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome. So, in this session, let us continue uh, our discussion about conflict of interest in rating agencies. So, we have seen in the previous session that there are mainly three beneficiaries of an effective rating mechanism. One is investors, second is security issuers and the third one is uh, regulators. Let us see what are the sources of conflict of interest for the rating agencies. The potential for a conflict is clearly created by the fact that there are multiple users of ratings. That is foremost important source of a reason by for the conflict of interest. Then coming to the investors, you know that investor is interested in a well researched impartial assessment of credit quality. So, you know that uh, in the market because of information asymmetry, uh, in order to distinguish between lemon and peach, uh, you know that actually one of the main source of information to do so uh, is the credit rating, right. The credit rating that means giving the rating uh, for the uh, company and their uh, financial instruments. Uh, that is so investor is interested in a well researched uh, impartial assessment of credit quality. And coming to the regulators, regulators are interested in a stable relationship between the ratings and default risk over time. So, they want to see what is the credit rating received by a firm and its debt instruments and then accordingly they also want to see that there is a high correlation between the ratings and the default risk over time. So, that actually regulators if they see that there is a uh, robust relationship correlation between both then they can ensure that the rating mechanism uh, is more credible and impartial right and coming to firms uh, you know that firms obviously uh, they always seek uh, favorable ratings so the what is the advantage here favorable rating obviously you know that because of favorable ratings that means suppose somebody is getting triple a ratings then you know that uh, that means it will be considered as the prime rating right the, the high quality that means really, really a very low default risk that means they will be able to borrow from the market at a low rate of interest right they will be able to plus if they issue ipo the unit uh, price for the ipo also will be very high so in that way firms they will be seeking favorable rating here so because of this multiple uses uh, let us see uh, what the let us elaborate the sources of conflict of interest and because the rating agencies themselves are uh, have their own interests as commercial enterprises so they have their own uh, interest in as commercial enterprises so obviously you know that they they want to maximize their revenues and market value so in this process they actually make best better use of the advantage they are having that is the information advantage uh, they are having in the markets. So, let us see the mechanism through which this type of conflict might come into play. So, one is actually the compensation arrangements in ratings firm rewarded uh, analysts for securing additional rating business and incentive for lenient treatment would be created. That means, uh, if the compensation uh, arrangements in a rating firm reward analyst for securing additional rating business, uh, an incentive for lenient treatment would be created here. And the second is that rating agencies tended to adopt uh, positions favoring the party with whom they had previously worked closely. That means, with a client firm. So, that means if they already work with the other firm, so they are actually tend to adopt position favoring the party with whom they had previously worked closely because they are getting their business, right. So, because when they are, they are actually rating, they are actually also getting the rating business. 
So since there are freedom that each firm they can approach any of the rating agencies. So it's not necessary that they have to stick to one particular rating agency. So rating agencies in order to ensure that their business, uh, they were to get their business and uh, to retain their business, uh, they, they always adopt a position favoring the party with whom they have work, work closely. Another potential source of vulnerability to conflict of interest could arise from uh, the concentration in the industry. So you know that the rating industry is a kind of uh, oligopoly market that means dominated by a small number of players. So because of that, there is uh, significant barriers to entry uh, to the industry. So because of that, actually what happened that since the competitive position of the agencies is assured because there are only few players, uh, they have less incentive to provide the best possible service. So they devote a fewer resources in quantity or in terms of quality to the credit assessment process than would be justified by the fees received. So that means they will be looking more at the fee that they are getting, uh, maybe they will be spending uh, less uh, resources be it in uh, quantity or in terms of quality uh, for the credit assessment process. So what specific uh, conflict could this divergent interest give rise to? We can see here is that an obvious risk is that issuer fee model uh, could result in rating agencies implicitly or explicitly offering more favorable ratings in exchange for business. So that means if you give me the firm, suppose if you, you are the owner of the firm and you are the firm, if you give me uh, your rating business to me, uh, if you approach me, so obviously I will be more lenient to you because the incentive mechanism is like that and then I will be giving uh, more favorable ratings and obviously you know that if I give you uh, favorable ratings and in the coming years also, coming days also you will be approaching me for your prospective uh, rater, right. So that means since most bond issuers are rated anyway, one could ask what exactly do issuers think they are paying for. So one more thing you need to remember here, we need to highlight here, that means in order to do the ratings, actually firms pay fees to rating agencies. Suppose for getting rated for a firm or is a debt instrument, uh, you can securities, uh, you can see that firms pay fees to rating agencies, but not by any potential lenders. And we suppose if you are bu buying a bond or if you are buying an IPO, actually we are not paying for uh, the rating, the rating that we see in the market domain, public domain, we are not paying for that. It's actually the firms are paying, the issuer of the security, the firm, they pay fees to the rating agencies. And at the same time, this is one, one source of conflict. Um, then another uh, motivating factor is that in addition, firms also give consultancy business to same uh, rating agencies. And you know, so often a uh, rating, it uh, often end up with rating its own, the bis own business advisors. And because in the consultancy business, they will be giving lots of consultancy services, various advisors uh, to the firm for developing uh, its uh, financial product. So actually who is going to rate it finally? The same firm uh, who gave advice, uh, the, the same firm is going to do the rating as well. So that means rating, uh, often rating uh, own businesses. Obviously you know that they will be uh, giving favorable ratings. One more thing, we can see that actually this uh, conflict of interest played uh, a considerable role, major role uh, in the 2007-8 crisis. You know that credit rating agencies uh, in the 2007-8 crisis, they have been under severe criticism for the role they placed in the subprime crisis. And actually the rating given by the credit rating agencies was actually not actually the uh, impartial uh, ratings. So the, when the housing prices began to fall, uh, many AAA rated products have to down downgrade actually. So that means triple A rated obviously you know that low default risk that actually high quality debt instrument that ratings but actually you know that once the 2007-8 crisis started these products uh, had to finally get downgraded. 
Well, many of these, these uh, bonds, uh, many of these debt instruments who got high rating, finally they became speculative or junk bond, they got uh, junk bond status, speculative status. There what happened that because of the conflict of interest, whatever we have discussed till now, uh, you know, because of the conflict of interest, uh, one of the conflict of interest is that because of all these, they rated the same product which they had helped to structure. So, the product they develop uh, based on which it was developed um, based on their advice, they actually uh, rated the same product as well. So, because of that actually many of them got a high quality rating actually uh, in real they did not deserve it, right. They did not deserve but they got the triple A or double A ratings. But at the end we have seen that uh, that all had to finally downgrade to junk bond status. So, what um, security exchange commission did actually uh, as a solution after the lesson from 2007-8 crisis was that they banned from rating the same product they structured. And no, not only that they have been asked to disclose uh, their historical grading as well. So, let us now move to another domain of conflict of interest that is um, in universal banking. This is the another area uh, of conflict of interest in the financial sector. So, what is a universal bank means? A universal bank means here, uh, universal banking means a firm doing uh, all the businesses including commercial banks, uh, investment banks, uh, insurance companies all are combined uh, in one organization and use the reputation uh, acquired in one business to enter another and it will have an advantage over specialized banks. So, as compared to any specialized bank who is only doing commercial banking or only doing for example, agriculture banking as compared to that a universal bank will be uh, combining all these activities together and um, from this uh, they will be making uh, actually making use of the economies of scale and economies of scope and making maximize their profit. However, this process actually ingo conflict of interest. So, the economies of scope may also exist in building a reputation for financial institutions, uh, economies of scope in serving the large customer bases uh, that commercial banks, investment banks, brokerage and insurance companies create. So, this considerable overlap in the information they collect may reduce the cost of supplying these services jointly, right, because of the economies of scope that we see seen here. So, proprietary information obtained by information in securities issue and lending should improve the quality uh, of their portfolio. So, universal banking uh, also increases the point of contact a bank has with a firm expanding the number of services and improving uh, its information acquisition and monitoring. So, coming to the information synergies in universal banking, let us first discuss what are the so what are the information synergies that could happen in universal banking, then let us link these to the conflict of interest. So, the universal banks uh, you know that actually they have better informed than independent investment banks and the issues they underwrite may be perceived as having a better certification. Similarly, universal banks may be better advices for mergers and acquisitions. So, in making and monitoring loans for example, commercial banks gain uh, information about firms uh, that is not usually known to outside investors that is one and investment bank also collect similar information but by forming long term lending relationships and providing transaction services, uh, commercial banks may acquire complementary information as well. You know by combining commercial and investment banking, a universal bank will benefit in the reduction of cost from the economies of scope in information collection. Similarly, as I mentioned here uh, before, uh, universal banks may be better uh, advices for mergers and acquisitions. So, given this synergy, the market should be willing to pay a higher price uh, 
uh, that means I accept a lower yield on, on their securities, on securities that are underwritten by universal banks compared to independent investment banks. Uh, that is what the general public, uh, the, the investors, that means the market uh, would be willing to pay a higher price for that because they think that the securities underwritten by universal banks as compared to independent investment banks will be more credible because of uh, the synergy, information synergy they are having. So, the, however, there are lots of sources of conflict of interest because of activities within a firm serve uh, multiple departments. What we can see here is that if the potential revenues from one department surge, uh, there will be an incentive for employees in that department to distort information uh, to the advantage of their clients and the profit of their department. And issues served by the underwriting department uh, will benefit from aggressive sales to customers of the bank. But you know the customers are hoping to get unbiased investment advice here, right? But what the what is happening here is that um, the issuer served by uh, the underwriting department will benefit from aggressive sales to the bank here, uh, to the customers of the bank. So let's take some examples for that. A bank manager may push the affiliate's products to the disadvantage of the customer, fail to offer dispassionate advice and limit losses from the from a poor public offering by placing them in bank managed trust accounts that is one a bank with a loan to a firm whose credit or bankruptcy risk has increased has private knowledge that that may encourage it to have the bank's underwriting department sell bonds to the unsuspecting public paying off the loan and earning a fee so that means these are all kind of some kind of cheatings, right? So you can also see that bank may also make uh, below market loans, may, may make below market loans to investors to finance the purchase of securities underwritten by an affiliate. Uh, a bank may also try to influence or cause the borrowings or investing customers to buy insurance products as well. So that means uh, because when the universal banking who is having commercial bank, investment banks, uh, insurance, you know that by commercial bank they are having access to uh, lots of customers, uh, the financial information of lots of customers, several many customers and obviously they will be knowing their uh, financial activities through the, through the, through the bank. And similarly, uh, underwriter as an investment bank that also make them lots of information and plus as an insurer, uh, insurer. So all these three actually what they will do that information based on one business they try to get the other business and based on that they will be getting try to get the business in the other department. So all these things uh, at the end the objective of this firm uh, is to maximize this profit and this actually universal bank will engage in some manipulative activities because of this conflict of interest. Let us see uh, what are the remedies uh, that can be used uh, to reduce this conflict of interest. There have been uh, five generic approaches that are actually in fact more than that. So let us uh, discuss the main five generic approaches. One is market discipline. Uh, market discipline means market forces can work through two mechanisms. One, they can penalize uh, the service provider if they exploit conflict of interest, the demand and supply forces. You know that uh, somebody is giving manipulated information, obviously their reputation will be affected and finally uh, over time they will be uh, out of the market. right? And second is market forces can promote new institutional means to contain conflict of interest. For example, uh, by generating a demand for information from organization uh, structured to uh, reduce conflicts. Second one is uh, mandatory disclosure for increased transparency. That means you make it mandatory disclosure of conflicted relationship uh, increases investors ability to judge how much weight to place on information provided by an agent. That means uh, if there is a suppose an investment banking if they are engaged in uh, consultancy business uh, they also need to clearly uh, disclose who are their clients. Uh, what are what kind of products uh, the advice and make all this information uh, in the public domain. And third one is uh, supervisory oversight that means 
supervisor the firm firms can appoint supervisors in their respective area so that supervisors can observe whether a conflict of interest is being exploited without revealing confidential information to a financial firm's competitors so that the firm can continue to engage uh, profitably in information production activities so supplied with this information the supervisors can take actions to prevent financial firm from exploiting uh, conflicts of interest and the fourth one is separation of functions that means separation of function means separation of activities uh, into different in house departments with the firewalls between them second one is uh, organization of different activities into separately capitalized affiliates and third one is uh, prohibition of combination of activities uh, into in any organizational form and however though these are remedies at the same time we need to remember that uh, separation of functions actually uh, it also adversely affect the synergies in information collection that is an opportunity cost anyway the last one is uh, socialization of information production socialize the provision or the funding source of the relevant uh, information so you know how our a uh, government agency or public funded entity not operating in a competitive market may not have the same incentive as private financial institutions to produce high quality information so socialization of information production that means uh, mandating a government agency or a public funded entity to collect information that is one solution uh, however we also need to remember that uh, they may not have the same incentives as private financial institutions to produce uh, high quality information uh, not only that forcing information production to be conducted by a government or quasi uh, government entity may reduce conflicts of interest but it may lower the flow of information to financial markets you know that sometime on the one side you know that uh, government agencies won't be that much incentivized second one uh, market but that the um, firms uh, may not be willing to share all this information to a credit rating so into a uh, public agency government agency so all this would sometime affect the information production so though we recommend that socialization is one of the solution but at the same time socialization of information production has uh, sometime its own cons as well that means the flow of information to financial markets may not be that uh, robust or sound enough so these are the five remedies that we just now discuss here and uh, there have been several policy initiative to overcome this conflict of interest especially from the us context you can see that uh, this act uh, in 2002 what the act uh, mandated that a public company accounting oversight board was set up and it was also made it that a uh, no non audit services to a firm which they audit then the global legal settlement of 2002 here uh, no spinning was allowed uh, spinning was banned so fines on firms manipulating information uh, that also agreed this was such a global legal settlement by not only uh us government agencies uh, us agencies but uh, from other countries as well so they agreed for no bad spinning and uh, fines on firms manipulating uh, information so you know because of this conflict of interest uh, what we have seen that the conflict of uh, interest actually adversely affect the efficient working of financial market the different areas for instance we have seen four main areas uh, or where we can see the conflict of interest so because of that overall what we can see that the efficiency of the market uh, it will be distorted uh, mainly because the asymmetric information which we uh, expect that it will be reduced but because of conflict of interest asymmetric information increases in the market and the efficiency of the market uh, getting adversely get affected and you know that it would lead to adverse selection and moral hazard problem and as a result you know that over time that is one reason by internal financing is the major source of uh, finance for many companies so look at these four countries what is the major sources of finance so you can see that internal finance um, that internal finance is the major sources of finance for uh, for all these four countries so you look at for example the us is nearly 
85 percentage more than 85 percentage and same almost similar for united kingdom and germany and J japan uh, you know that then comes uh, financial intermediaries second place goes to interme financial intermediaries uh, you know that financial intermediaries they have the ability to reduce information asymmetries uh, they can also reduce the transaction cost and because of the managerial and technical efficiency they are having they can reduce the transaction cost and they can also reduce the information asymmetry and as a result the problem of uh, adverse selection and moral hazard can be minimized and as you can see that financial markets uh, is actually very less so you can these are through financial markets by one through intermediaries one through directly through the market but you can see that a uh, lion share of companies uh, finance uh, is coming through uh, internal finance you know why firms would prefer to rely uh, more on internal finance you know the one reason may be prefer internal finance from uh, retained earnings because they, they prefer internal financing and mostly from uh, their own retained earnings that the undistributed profit undistributed dividend and use it as investment financing and why one another reason because the information cost you know that well functioning uh, well performing company uh, with a high expected profit and uh, very uh, high net worth and with a strong balance sheet uh, then you know that um, uh, their the um, credit worthiness or the efficiency of that firm uh, may not be communicated to the market uh, because of the information asymmetry and the conflict of interest that we discuss here and because of that they may not be able to uh, borrow at a cheap rate that means uh, sometimes they they also have to pay high interest rate if they want to borrow from the market because of the asymmetric information so this adverse selection so borrowing is prohibitively expensive even for good quality firms so firms themselves know better of their credit worthiness so what they will do that if someone some firms if they think that their credit worthiness is much much higher than the market average uh, they would prefer to go for internal finance because they know that it's difficult for them uh, it is actually expensive for them to borrow from the market then why do they still have stocks one uh, explanation for this is that even the large companies issue stocks so one of the reason is that is asset valuation so the asset valuation the public with the valuation the market valuation of a company happen through the stock price right any companies their net worth normally the stock is calculated using uh, is uh, asset valuation is mainly done through the uh, stock price uh, the stock value so here uh, one of the measure is that actually tobin skew ratio tobin skew ratio means the market value of a company uh, divided by its asset replacement cost uh, suppose um, the market value of a company because the um, economic fundamentals are strong of a company suppose uh, it's a good a good firm um, with a high profit and then suppose the market value of this firm for example uh, 200 billion suppose uh, suppose 200 billion uh, is the market valuation uh, of this firm but you know that uh, in order to replace all these assets suppose it's a factory uh, or in all this uh, factory that in machines and all these premises suppose the replacement to replacement cost of this factory is for example uh, 100 billion suppose uh, so then you know that actually actually you know to replace all the equipments of this company all these assets machines and tools premises and all a complete replacement it actually needs only 100 billion but because of the future for the because of the economic fundamentals of this company uh, expected profit as well and because of all these things market is willing to uh, value them 200 200 billion so here the q, tobin skew ratio uh, is 2 right that means market is valuing more than its actual uh, cost uh, the actual replacement cost that means is two that means any tobin skew ratio uh, t ratio uh, tq if it is greater than one itself means uh, next time they can actually raise more and more capital right because you see if they suppose they buy a new 10 billion um, 
uh, machines and tools so immediately you know that market will be valuing it for 20 so that means they can actually enable this firm it will enable the high robin skew ratio enables firms to acquire more capital uh, cheaply so these are all the main things so, so what we discuss here in this session is that we discuss conflict of interest in four domains more areas uh, in the finance market and then we said that um, this actually affects the efficient working of the uh, finance market and also one of the reason for why firms uh, rely on uh, internal finance may be because of uh, the conflict of interest and resulting distortion in markets Thank you.